wait for the town! Ladies and gentlemen, in the latter part of the Cretaceous period, Dromaeosaurids ruled the land using their speed, agility, and vicious hunting techniques. And our favorite Velociraptor, Blue, because of her extreme intelligence, but also because of her empathy towards people, which is an unusual trait. exhibiting a little bit of disobedience. She is responding to my voice commands, though. That's a good thing. So I hope you all read the fine print on those waivers you were supposed to sign, because we're going to start with our volunteers here at Jurassic World. And this lovely lady is blue. All right, did we get that documented? All right, great job, folks. Head right that way. All right, who is next? Being out here alone. Hey, hey. Alright folks, we're going to start this queue back up. We are going to need to pick up the pace. As you can see, she is starting to get aggressive. Alright, who's next? Right this way, guys. Come on up. Let's talk for a moment about the T-Rex. Hey, sorry, I guess you called it. We used in a day. Now, we know. Let's start with what they eat. A T-Rex alone consumes more than 300 pounds of meat and 40 gallons of
welcome you all right i have one more person to introduce he is my co-host you might recognize him from saturday night live or the tonight show everybody say hi jimmy hi jimmy oh hey there you made it Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure that you get through this experience in one piece. You've got the very best guide. So those masks will be required. All right, and with that, we have left the theme park, and we are now in the heart of Hollywood's oldest movie studio. The posters on either side of the tram are what we call our Universal Timeline. They represent just a few of the over 8,000 movies we've made here in our 106-year history. Check out on your right hand side, this is our fire station, Fire Station 51. It's real, might be one of the only real things I show you today. The firefighters of Fire Station 51 history, including Frankenstein's Lab, Dracula's Lair, Scarface's Mansion, and the Visitor Center for Jurassic Park. Cars 3 and 4, give me a thumbs up if you can still hear me. I have to reduce my volume as we enter the front lot. All right, thank you. Between the 1920s and the 1960s, Universal Studios had what were known as contract players. That means actors who worked exclusively for us making movies. Some actors who were under contract with Universal include Tony Curtis, Jimmy Stewart, Rob Hudson, and Doris Day. Listen, we're right in New York. This is Brownstone Street. That's where Jim Carrey lived in Bruce Almighty and where Kevin McAllister threw snowballs off the roof as his aunt and uncle in Home Alone too. And that's a golf cart. <laughs> All right, now that patch of grass there might seem pretty small, but using a few establishing or large shots, it's actually been seen as the entirety of Central Park. Welcome to Hollywood. It's all pretend. <laughs> I'll point out a lot of that on today's. Think that you're not where you know you are. Uh, in fact, this right here is where we filmed Hairspray Live as well. Now, if you remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. That's right, Jimmy, and many filmmakers choose to do just that. You can see our Metro sets as Chicago in the Blues Brothers, as New York in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and even as Los Angeles itself in the season two opener of SWAT starring Shamar Moore. This is also where American Ninja Warrior comes every year to film their LA semi-quarterfinal ops. plywood especially if we're gonna blow them up or if they're just in the background they're a lot lighter weight uh, and safer and easier to move around than the real thing the tram that's our spinosaurus barbara everybody wave and say hi barbara oh, oh. Out. all right now keep your eyes trained on barbara as we go around this career you might notice something a little off barbara's only the spinosaurus we only ever build what the camera's going to see because you the audience do the rest of the work for us filling in whatever we didn't build. So thank you so much for the tale of Barbara. We really appreciate it. All right, now if you're a fan of Jurassic Park, you know weather plays a large role in the films. Anytime it rains, you're bound to see a dinosaur. Here in Southern California, we don't get a whole lot of rain, so when we need it for the movies, we have to make it ourselves. Martin's doing us a big favor right now. We're pulling into our old Mexico set so that we can give you a live Hollywood weather effects demonstration. All right, that thunder you're hearing is coming from speakers we've hidden around this portion of our lot. And those flashes of lightning are from flash boxes we've hidden as well. It's going to rain in just a second, and that's going to come from those long skinny poles on top of the building. It's super raining. Look to the right. It's not raining. For three, it's raining for you because you've got some cool stuff on the windows as well. Now, the thunder that's out here is here just for the tram. If we were recording a scene out here today, there would be no thunder at all. Because only about 15% of what you hear in the movies was recorded at the time of filming. Oh, see? Oh. 
Uh, folks, I don't want to alarm anyone, but look out! It seems to be a flash flood headed straight for the town! All right, say goodbye to Mexico and say hello to Six Points, Texas. These are some of the oldest standing sets in the back lot today called Six Points because in the day of silent films, we had six identical Western sets that all met in the middle like spokes on a wheel. Because the movies were silent, we could film six movies all at the same time without interrupting each other. Today, though, it might look familiar to you if you look to your left and see that opera house right there. Look familiar? Folks, this is where Quentin Tarantino came to film his ninth movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, starring Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. They spent most of the summer of 2018 right here on this street. All right, here's the part where I let you know we're just about halfway through our tour. So once again, if you drop something of value, just can't wait to use the restroom, pull that cord and stay seated. All right, another illusion on this tram. Look to your left, you see that teeny tiny door? Yeah. To be saved, you stick her in a very large doorway and she looks a little more demure. Now the other thing we do to make this really look like the Old West is we bring in truckloads and truckloads of dirt and we lay it out on the street so it looks nice and dusty like the Old West. If that film also had our tiny cowboy and our tall damsel, we would then dig trenches in the dirt and make the woman walk in the dirt so that the man seemed taller. Look, it's Hollywood. Welcome. Another illusion. Take a look to your left. See that cute little pond there? Haha. -ha. It's been seen as the entirety of the Pacific Ocean in the 1960s series Mikhail's Navy. You use teeny tiny boats and then the water seems really, really big. That's my immense pleasure to welcome you to their home. Little Europe, check it out. Even the streets are cobblestone as we enter this portal.